does not ignore it. But where does it begin? That's the whole question. Okay. We're examining one by one, one by one, one by one. So, it's not, I'll stop. I'll read each sentence because Sukhya has said that we have already read it. So, I'll go to each sentence and see. Okay. So, but maybe we can see the summary of the previous paragraph to get the reference. Okay. So, that we know the context. And the summary of the previous paragraph. The purpose of birth in the world of multiplicity is to experience the descent. You are descending, you are, you are a soul, you are a divine soul and you have come down to the physical world. What is the purpose? Why do you have to come down at all? The purpose of birth into the physical, into the world of multiplicity is to experience the descent into complete self-oblivion and retrace the cycle back again to our one's full consciousness of the origin from which one came. Okay? So this is what is the purpose. <clears throat> then, but why at all do that? It's a game. Okay? So it's a game is a way of saying, whenever you say something, problems arise and you have to meet those problems. So one problem will lead to another Another problem will lead to another, like that it goes on. So you are you are coming from the divine, you are the divine, and you have descended into the physical world to get the maximum ignorance, okay, maximum um, the lack of such ananda, sat, chit, shakti, ananda, all of them become minimum in the physical world. And then you have to climb back again. Each individual is doing that. So this is the adventure of consciousness that the soul undertakes to experience the joy of self-discovery. You discover who you are and that gives you tremendous joy. Whenever there is a problem, when you solve that problem, you get tremendous joy and no? it's always there. So, this is what is it. The cosmic manifestation as it is at present is not the only possibility, but it could have been a manifestation of a typal or static worlds. The divine could have created other types of worlds without our evolution. It could be static worlds without evolution, where evolution would not exist. Then what is now the goal of evolution? It is recovery of knowledge, recovery of consciousness, recovery of bliss and power. That would be the permanent static condition. When you go to the highest level, no evolution. From evolutionary status, you are going to a non-evolutionary status because everything is perfect. And when everything is perfect, you don't need anything, any change. Okay. That's what he said. Satchidananda descends into ignorance and nations in order to experience himself in the opposite conditions of his own nature, which are what is his own nature? In the physical world, ignorance, suffering, and incapacity. The purpose of evolution is not a rapid climb back to the source, nor is it a mere ignorant mechanical repetition of life in the field of imperfection and limitation. This would be a meaningless blunder. The purpose of involution and evolution is to discover oneself in the opposite conditions of one's own innate divine nature. Consciousness must be rediscovered in inconscience. Power must be found in the field of incapacity. Even while remaining here, okay, you must find power back. Omniscience must be established in the field of total ignorance. Bliss must be firmly founded and lived and lived, huh? founded and lived in the world of suffering and pain. <laughs> Immortality must reign in the mortality of the transient world. This is the purpose. In other words, so is already saying the divine is establishing all these things one by one in the physical world. It's not the yogi running away into the higher level and remaining there. No, it has to be here itself. This is constant stress. This world is not a blunder, nor a futile existence, as many are saying. Okay, the Buddhists say that, the Mahabharata say that, okay, 
even the existentialists say that there is a world of imperfection okay but it is not it's a world of imperfection seemingly but there is a divine presence which is hiding and slowly he is revealing himself that's it fact not the not a curse many say even it's a curse okay suffering pain perversity but it's an opportunity you have seen it in that way. even in a personal life you can take it in that way. whenever a difficulty comes it's not a problem but it's an opportunity you have to take it in that sense then life becomes very positive and not negative to discover the divine bliss in the world to build a temple of god in the material world is a task set to the human soul this is what he said in the previous part okay so now we read the paragraph we have to look into today the ignorance we see is not the secret soul is not in the secret soul the ignorance is not in the secret the soul is not ignorant okay it is covered up by like the sun is covered up by the clouds okay the sun is perfect always the sun is your soul and the clouds are the ignorance covering it okay so, but in the apparent prakriti apparent prakriti okay now does it belong to the whole of prakriti it cannot for prakriti is the action of the all conscious ah that's interesting it is who is creating prakriti the all conscious the consciousness is creating prakriti therefore it cannot be fully that's why we say at the lower level matter is 99.99% in conscious but there is a 00.0001 consciousness that not wholly it belongs to not only it belong wholly to the prakriti i have used the word wholly i have changed a little bit okay so it cannot for prakriti is the action of the all conscious but arises in some development from its original integrality of light and power original integrality light and power are there fully merged into one another now we use the words light and power replace the word light by consciousness and replace the word power by prakriti so or in consciousness you are force so chit shakti chit goes to consciousness and shakti goes to down in the physical world it goes becomes prakriti purusha prakriti all these are equivalent words okay to prakriti you can use the word force shakti okay? and apparently it's also ignorance okay multiplicity all these words are descriptive of prakriti and consciousness you can use the word purusha consciousness you can also use the word knowledge okay you can also use the word one all these belong to the purusha then with the original integrality of light and power original integrality at the supermetal level where does that development take place in what principle of being does it find its opportunity in starting point which is the opportunity it finds what is it he talk of the ignorance where does the, the first word of this para is of the ignorance so where does that development take place in what principle of being does it find its opportunity and starting point not certainly in the infinite being the infinite consciousness the infinite delight which are the supreme planes of existence and from which all else derives or descends so what is this such an very clearly it is such an because the infinite consciousness infinite delight which are this infinite being infinite being sir infinite consciousness chit and infinite delight ananda so he is talking of the satyananda from satyananda is coming down so satyananda cannot be ignorant okay? from which all else derives and descends into this obscure ambiguous manifestation so, there it can have no place 
Now the word ambiguous is interesting. Why? Because the word ambi always means twofold. Two. Okay? Ambiguous means it is neither here nor there. It isn't very doubtful. Okay? Why? Because in the physical world you have dualities. Okay. If there is light, there is also darkness. If there is virtue, there is also sin. If there is static condition, there is also movement. There is no static condition in the physical world. But anyway, it's an ambiguous. Then we use the word ambidextrous. Okay, ambidextrous means equally good at action with both hands, left hand and right hand. Then ambidextrous. Dextrous, skillful. Then we have the word ambivalent. Ambivalent means its value could be either plus or minus. So ambiguous means that in the physical world there are all these opposites are there. Okay, there it can have no place. So in such an order, ignorance cannot be there. Not in the super mind. Ah, now he is making a distinction between super mind and such an order. Such an order is even higher than super mind. Remember, ah, huh? super mind is not the highest. Super mind is the go between. It is the one that links the unmanifest with the manifest. So this you, you must be very clear about it. Although it is very, 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 very high up level, okay. Still, it's not the highest. It's a link between the unmanifest and the manifest, or the link between the one and the many, or the link between spirit and matter. There, it can have no place. Not in the super mind. For in the super mind, the infinite light and power are always present, even in the most finite workings. Okay, mother once once went to the super mind, super mental world, and the description there is fantastic. You should read that. I think I gave you the reference. Okay, mother's uh, <laughs> experience as a super mental boat. If you want to get the text, you can only Google mother's experience as a super mental boat. You will get the whole experience. It was in the afternoon that she had that, and she had said that she wanted to be there, but she was pulled down because the clock was striking. Okay, the clock was striking three o'clock, I think. It was three o'clock, and it pulled her down. She didn't want to come down because it was so wonderful that experience. And then when she came down into her normal consciousness, she remembered the whole thing. Okay. And very interesting feature of that experience is that she said. I went there with my waking consciousness. There is a consciousness at the lower level, and there is a consciousness at the higher level. There is consciousness at all the levels. Your own consciousness is gone, taking so many different. But when she went there, it was not with the spiritual consciousness. It was the normal physical consciousness that she went there. This itself is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Okay. Anyway, that's it. So there also there is now. Ignorance, not in the super mind, or in the super mind, the infinite light and power are always present, even in the most finite workings. In fact, what are the finite workings that she was doing there? She was selecting people for the super mental world, and how she was selecting? Very interesting. She is just looking at the person, no psychological judgment, just seeing the colors and the aura, and if the colors are right. Then you are fit for the supermental world. Otherwise, you are sent back again for development in the physical. World. You can't enter the supermental world. And that was she was selecting. But how do you select? See the colors. And if the color around the head is a supermental color, okay, orangeish, okay, orange gold, that's a color. So she knew that they are ready. Even if there is slight. Paleness about it, but she would admit. Okay, so this is what she was doing—a finite work. She was selecting people, and the consciousness of unity embraces the consciousness of diversity. In other words, both are present in the supermental world: oneness as well as diversity. Otherwise, there couldn't be many. Okay, all these are there already. There, <clears throat> and men are. Being trained to enter into the supermental world, it is on the plane of mind that this putting back of the real self consciousness becomes possible. 
is using a very simple word he is saying mind and that also he is using a lower case mind okay so then what happens the real self consciousness starts becoming dim putting back he has said putting back you remember here he used word exclusive concentration so although you know that you are you have a supermental consciousness that supermental consciousness has the power to put it at the back of the mind okay? and enter into the shallower parts of the mind for mind is that power of the conscious being which differentiates and runs along the lines of differentiation with the sense of unity behind it only not characteristic not the very stuff of its workings so this is the what is saying you remember our mind is analytical it divides to understand things it makes separation and then okay one by one we understand and then it gathers everything together this is the nature of the mind and the nature of the super mind is exactly the opposite it is a synthetic it sees all the parts together and then from that unity it goes to the oneness but in the normal mind of man we see only the parts and then we try and assemble it into oneness and understand the nature this is exactly what happened also in the in the physical world with science you know <clears throat> for instance if you are trying to improve your food yield okay when the scientists try to improve the food yield they see that they can do that for instance they can rice can be grown in less than the normal time Wheat also can be grown in less than the normal time. That was why the grain revolution took place in India. Okay, but there are there are complications. There are problems that are side effects are there. So this is what you learn. So if you look at everything from the total viewpoint, that is synthetic. For instance, okay, wherever there are uh, you know these uh, marshy lands, for instance in Florida, okay. There is marshy lands, and this is a waste. So let us uh, make it solid land and put buildings there. But then you affect the environment. The environment is affected. So these are the so you are saying piecemeal, and then you have problems. But when you see the whole, there are no problems because you understand the necessity of each thing. Okay, so that's why we are saying mind. For mind is that power of the conscious being which differentiates and along the Lines of nature. You can ask one question: Which level of mind? Okay, he is saying mind, but mind goes up right from over mind right down to the physical mind. Okay, all the different grades: over mind, intuitive mind, illumined mind, higher mind, the normal mind of man, rational mind, then the vital mind, and then the physical mind. All this is mind. Okay. This is the principle that you must remember. The consciousness is there in all the stages, but again, the same truth also applies to this sat also. In all the stages, there is sat. At the highest level, sati. At the lowest level, gross. In between, different grades of sati. Same thing with ananda also. Same thing with also power. Okay, they are all together. There is absolute at the top, the infinite. At the absolute bottom, we are again infinite in the negative way. Okay. <laughs> Now I go back to the sentences. Okay. If by any chance this supporting sense of unity could be drawn back, it is possessed by mind, not in its own separate life, but because it has the super mind behind it. It has the power because it reflects the light of the super mind, of which is a derivative and secondary power. So remember that our mind is a foreign condition, a diminished condition, an obscured condition of the super mind. If a veil could fall between mind and super mind, shutting off the light of the truth or letting it come through only in rays diffused. Scattered, reflected, but with distortion and division, then the phenomenon of the ignorance would intervene, 
And is there such a veil? Yes. Such a veil exists, says the Upanishad, constituted by the action of mind itself. It's an overmind, a golden lid which hides the face of the supramental truth, but reflects its image. <laughs> In mind, now he is using a cap mind, it becomes more opaque and smoky, luminous co coverture. Okay, coverture or coverture. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but there is. So, very clearly, he is telling you there is smoky, luminous coverture. The overmind, from the overmind, you can look up and see the supermind. But there is a thin veil, it's a transparent veil. Okay. Translucent rather, not transparent, translucent. Because if it is smoky, then you can't see fully. Okay. It's a smoky luminous. The description is clear. The words transparent means you can see clearly. But the word translucent means not so clearly. Okay. The light is coming through. Like many of our windows, now you have these windows sometimes which allow the light to come in, but you can't see clearly outside. Because it gives you privacy in the house. So that's a type of they, uh, the glasses. Uh, there are you know, scratches. Of course, a very uh, regular pattern of scratches so that the light comes through, but the sight cannot. Okay? Transparency is not. This is exactly what I'm saying about the golden lid that hides the face of the sun. This is in the Upanishad. He's talking about the Upanishad. The Isha Upanishad. Hiran Mayena Patrena Api Hitam. That's the word used. Satyasya Api Mukham Api Hitam. Satyasya Mukham. The face of truth is hidden by the golden lid. That's what it's said. Hiran Mayena Patrena. It's a golden screen that is. Covering the face of the truth. That action is the absorbed looking downward of mind on the diversity, which is its characteristic movement. Okay. That diversity is the characteristic movement of the mind. And away from the supreme unity, which that diversity expresses. The supreme unity is being expressed by the diversity. Now, one example, all the species, okay, every species, the, all the cats are the diversity, but the one thing they have common is the supreme unity is the catness, okay, exactly with the same uh, thing with all the species. All the lions are the same, essentially, that's a unity, and all the Different lands are the diversity. So in the physical world, this unity is being expressed, he said. Okay? It is there. It's not the real unity, but it's being expressed. So it's a characteristic movement that never comes to the unity, which the diversity expresses until it forgets altogether to remember and support itself by the unity. This is the supermental. We have just had this fully one full chapter. The Triple status of the supermind. I'll remind you about it. The potentiality for multiplicity is there in the supermind, but it becomes a reality in the overmind when it comes up. The first status of supermind is oneness. Okay? But this oneness is not the oneness of Satchananda. The oneness of Satchananda is incorruptible. It cannot be made into the many. But the oneness of the supermind contains the possibility of the multiplicity. But this is the C. The C is absolutely silent. Second level, the second level, the status of supermind is the waves start forming because the potentiality is there. And when the waves start forming, it's only not a full wave, but a, a swell. The, the, it's beginning. If you see the C, you'll see how the wave comes. Huh? It comes slowly, it's a swell. It's a swelling that comes in the water and when it comes to the shore, it develops into a wave and falls. Okay, so this is the procedure described. So if an individual experiences this second status of the universe, 
he will feel himself to be one with the sea. The sea of what? The sea of consciousness. The sea of substance. The sea of power. The sea of ananda. He is one, but he is aware that he is experiencing. Individuality is experiencing the oneness. Now, the third Saturn of the super mind, I am telling you all this because it, it is uh, implied. Okay. The third Saturn of the super mind, the wave is beginning to forget that it is part of the sea. Okay. Now, that's what he is saying here. If you remember this image, you will see. Okay. That is it. That action, I am reading the text. That action is the absorbed looking downward of mind on the diversity, which is its characteristic movement, and away from the supreme unity, which that diversity expresses, until it forgets altogether to remember and support itself by the unity. When does that happen? When the consciousness comes down to the physical level. Okay? Then it completely forgets that it is one with everybody else. Okay? So clear what he said. Okay? Mm -hmm. Until it forgets altogether to remember and support itself by the unity. Even then, the unity supports it. Uh -huh. So interesting. Secretly, it is supporting. Okay? And makes its possible activities possible. This is exactly what the Gita also says that the divine is there in the heart of each creature, okay, making the body mind life turn as though mounted on a machine. Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani, Yantra Rudhani, mounted on a machine. That's what exactly he's saying. Even then, the unity supports it and makes its activities possible. Because if that support is not there, then the continuity of your individual existence cannot be there. Okay? Its absorbed energy is unaware of its origin and greater. The absorbed energy, the, your body-mind life, has forgotten that it is really the, the soul. That's what you are. It is unaware of its origin and greater the yourself. Okay? Origin is the over mind and the greater real self is the super mind. Since mind forgets that from which it derived because of absorption in the workings of formative energy, not the word formative, the energy at the highest level is formless. But when it keeps coming down, it starts making forms. And that's manifestation. So formative energy. Each word, if you give full value to it, you'll understand and become so clear. So this energy which is absolutely formless at the highest level, starts making forms in the lower levels, then it's coming down. Okay? It becomes more and more form, more and more form, until in the mind level, the forms are there, but they are not fixed. They are very, that's why the thoughts are so effervescent, so um, transient. Then when it comes down to the vital, the uh, energy becomes your desires and your wishes and becomes more permanent than the thought. Okay. Slightly denser substance. Then finally, when it comes down to the physical level, it becomes fixed forms, stones, okay, trees, whatnot, everything. Okay. Becomes so then. Since mind forgets that from which it derived because of absorption in the workings of formative energy, it becomes so far identified with that energy as to lose hold even on itself. You are not master of yourself at all. That's what you see. Okay? To become totally oblivious in a trance of work, which uh, it is no longer aware. This is the last stage of the descent of consciousness, an abysmal sleep, a fathomless trance. That's not man, but he's talking of the inconscious. This is the last stage of the descent of consciousness, an abysmal sleep, abysmal. An abysm is a deep cavity, okay, down like a canyon. So that is the inconscious. A fathomless trance, fathomless, there's no end to it. Infinitely it goes on. There's an infinity above and there's an infinity below, okay. A fathomless trance of consciousness, which is a profound basis of the action of material nature. Okay, so what's the time? 29. So again, to summarize the whole thing, 
Okay. Again, this because the thought is complex. We go through it, but when we are going into the analysis, then you forget what has been said earlier. That's why sometimes the summary can be very useful. Okay. So I'm reading it. Where is this conscious? This is my words, sir. Where is this consciousness located, and where does it originate? Is it in the soul? No, it's in prakriti. Prakriti, but it is not even in the entire prakriti because there is a para prakriti, and the para prakriti is divine, and an apara prakriti. Apara prakriti is below, and the para prakriti is divine. Up as it keeps coming down, that energy it slowly loses its divinity. And becomes more and more the unconscious and also dense. The apara is the mechanical nature that we see in the world around us. The para prakriti is the divine nature, one with consciousness and knowledge. So, where is this ignorance? Then it is not in the highest absolute or infinite consciousness, nor is it in the super mind. It is in the mind regions. That it becomes possible to relegate the infinite consciousness to the background, to exclude that. Okay. The previous chapter, exclusive concentration. No, this chapter only, exclusive concentration. Okay. Mind has a power to differentiate, to make separate. It increasingly goes towards multiplicity while reducing its awareness of unity and oneness. It slowly starts forgetting the. <laughs> oneness and starts becoming more and more identified with the multiplicity. Can this supporting action of unity, upholding the multiplicity, be reduced in a definite manner? So they are asking, at what point does it become that unity is supporting, but when does the unity disappear? Seem to disappear and become the multiple. Okay, upholding multiplicity is reduced to a definite manner. Can a veil be drawn between super mind, which is unity and oneness, and the mind ranges where there is increasing division and multiplicity? It is stated in the Isha Upanishad that a golden lid covers the face of the Son of Truth. Now, the Son of Truth is this. By the way, the Son is always a symbol of the super mind. Okay, this lid. Allows some some rays of the truth to percolate and seep through into the over mind, but it causes distortion, diffusion, and a scattering effect. Okay. It is the over mind that hides the face of the super mind and looks not upwards as much as downwards. It looks a little upwards, but not so much, but mostly downwards. This movement. Ends with a complete oblivion of the unity and the ignorance. Non-awareness of oneness is established in the inconscient. The one descends into the density of matter and apparently becomes the many. The complete consciousness becomes the sleep of inconscience. They were to say in the matter. Okay, we have been thirty-three. We have got seven minutes. So we can read the next part. It must be remembered. Anyone can read. Sunki Yasmin. Okay. Shall I read? Yes, Yasmin. Go ahead. It must be remembered. It must be remembered, however. That when we speak of a partial movement of consciousness force absorbed in its forms and actions in a limited field of its working, this does not imply any real division of its integrality. Uh, the putting of the rest of itself behind it has only the effect of making all that rest occult. To the frontal, immediately active energy in the limited field of movement, but not of shutting it out of the field. In the fact, the integral force is there, though veiled by the inconscient, and 
is that integral force supported by the integral self b which though its frontal energy does all the work and inhabits all the forms created by the movement it is to be noted also that in order to remove the veil of the ignorance the conscious force of being in us uses a reverse action of its power of exclusive concentration it quiets the frontal movement of prakriti in the individual consciousness and concentrates exclusively on the concealed inner being on the self or on the true inner psychic or mental or vital being the purusha to disclose it but when it has done so it need not remain in this opposite exclusiveness it can resume its integral consciousness or a global consciousness which includes both being of purusha and action of prakriti the soul and its instruments the self and the dynamism of the self power atma sa embrace its manifestation with a larger consciousness free from the pre- previous limitations free from the results of nature's forgetfulness of the indwelling spirit or it may quite the whole working it has manifested concentrate on a higher level of self and nature raise the being to it and bring down the powers of the higher level to transform the period previous manifestation <clears throat> all that is so transformed is still included but as a part of the higher dynamism and its higher values in a new and greater self creation this is what can happen when the consciousness force in our being decides to raise its evolution from the mental to the supramental level in each case it is tapas that is effective but it acts in a different manner according to the thing that has to be done according to the predetermined process dynamism self deployment deploying of the infinite so next class now these were also very interesting in the main detail teacher which was not spoken of but very interesting we we'll have to see what he is saying but we'll do this next time uh, then next time is tomorrow so in that case we don't need to there are too many left okay what i can do i can read again the summary of what he is saying okay sir Two minutes. We can just finish this up, and then we'll redo it tomorrow. It must be remembered what he said in this paragraph. It must be remembered that when we speak of focusing on a detail and forgetting the rest, it is not really an oblivion, but only a putting away out of the vision range into the periphery, where the forgotten waits to be recovered once again. It's only a relegation, a change of position from the center to the outer circumference of our action, of our attention, and not an abolition or an annulment. So <clears throat> there is a note on the screen that I will read next time. Now again, let us note that just as ignorance is a focusing on details and relegating the other unwanted minutia. to the outer ranges of our attention exactly in the same way the recovery of knowledge the whole putting away of the details is done by reverse action this is done by concentrating on the whole and forgetting of the many so when you are coming down you are forgetting the one and realizing the many becoming the many in the opposite direction when you are going up yoga is a concentrating on the oneness and forgetting the many it's a opposite okay? reverse process okay the whole acha is done by reverse action this is done by concentrating on the whole and forgetting of the many 
by focusing on the self supra conscient or the psychic intra conscient these two are the first and second movement in a third movement it is possible for man to concentrate on the higher ranges of consciousness by quieting the lower mental movements and then by the descent of the higher into the lower okay, transform the lower into the higher man can then have a harmony of the one and the many this is what the integral yoga can achieve okay what we say so we say for the we close here today and tomorrow we will redo this pattern it must be remember we will redo this pattern okay thank you rangeetha okay bye bye everybody thank you bye Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.